Hello and welcome to Thursday Thoughts, in which I present my October month end wrap up and November TBR. I finished The Bastard King by Gene Plavey and I can heartily recommend it as a superb historical novel. For some historical background, see the first episode of my Norman and Plantagenet series in the info cards above. I finished The Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer, thankfully. This is one of those texts that is inflicted on poor undergraduates by their professors in the mistaken belief that they are exposing them to a great classic work of English literature. I waited 50 years to read this great classic work and I wish I had waited another 50 years and then I wouldn't have been alive to read it at all. I highly recommend that you read something else. You have been warned. I went through the agony of reading it so you don't have to. Oh, I am such a martyr. I finished reading The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Style, characters and story are all superb. Wilkie Collins has produced a really excellent novel, full of suspense, mystery, twists and turns that keeps you fully engaged and reading on to find out what happens next. And what happens next is always surprising and therefore enjoyable. The Woman in White has a skillfully constructed plot told from multiple viewpoints that works really well and is really quite an ingenious device. The characters are interesting and well drawn and it is excellently written. I can't praise this novel highly enough. If you haven't read it yet, what are you waiting for? I waited 50 years before reading it, but it was worth the wait, unlike the item above. I finished reading the autobiography of Stephen Curtis Chapman, which is called Between Heaven and the Real World. Chapman, as a Christian songwriter and musician, was enormously successful, having sold over 11 million albums and he used his success to found a charity that has helped thousands of couples to adopt over 5,000 children from around the world. He and his wife adopted three children from China, even though they had three children of their own. Tragically, their third Chinese child was killed at the age of five when their son drove into the drive of their house and she ran in front of the car. The devastation and heartache that this caused to their family and the road back to normalcy makes for heartbreaking but ultimately inspiring reading. Because they used Chapman's fame and fortune to turn their grief over the loss of their daughter into positive and constructive action to found a care centre in China to help disabled children. I finished my reread of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. I cannot remember when I first read this book, but it was so long ago that I'd forgotten most of the details and my memory of the story was highly coloured by the larger than life portrayal of Long John Silver by Robert Newton in the 1950 film of Treasure Island. My reading of the book this time round left me with mixed feelings. I felt that it was a book of two halves. The first half is characterised by exciting action and fairly bowls along. The second half is given over to long detailed descriptions and the action is slowed down and is thus far less interesting. I felt that the second half of the novel began a long slow decline and then ended in an anticlimax. I also finished Dr. Wartle's School by Anthony Trollope. Mr. Peacock, a classical scholar, has come to Broughtonshire with his beautiful American wife to live as a schoolmaster. But when the blackmailing brother of her first husband, a reprobate from Louisiana, appears at the school gates, a dreadful secret is revealed and the county is scandalised. Ostracised by the community, the pair seem trapped in a hopeless situation until the combative but warm-hearted headmaster of the school, Dr. Wartle, offers his support and Mr. Peacock embarks upon a journey to America that he hopes will lay to rest 
the accusations once and for all. In this novel Trollope gives us a fascinating exploration into Victorian morality and the various reactions of his character to a morally ambiguous situation. As usual Trollope guides us skillfully through this minefield with a masterly touch. I thought it a thoroughly engaging novel and I can highly recommend it. It is one of Trollope's shorter novels at just over 200 pages. Finally, I finished one book rightly divided by Dr. Douglas D. Storfell. The main thesis of the book is that the Bible has three main divisions addressed to three different groups of people. And the reason, the reason people think that the Bible has contradictions is because they are taking scriptures from one period and trying to apply it to another period. The easiest way to understand this is to think in terms of past present and future. Although God is unchanging in his essential nature, he can and does change the way in which he operates. In the past he dealt with the nation of Israel and the scriptures from Genesis all the way through the four Gospels and into the beginning of the book of Acts is addressed to them. Acts is a book of history and is a transitional book from the book of Romans through to the book of Philemon, all written by Paul the Apostle and all of which begin with his name, the main addressees are all the nations on earth living in this present age of grace. From the book of Hebrews through to the book of Revelation, the addressees are certain groups who will be living in the future. I found the argument compelling and convincing and to anyone who wants to get a clear grasp of the biblical record I can highly recommend this book. Now here is my November TBR and my picks for non-fiction November. I'm planning to read the book I discovered in a charity shop recently, The Lost Masterpiece of Alexander Dumas called The Last Cavalier. Set against the smoking ruins of post-revolutionary France, The Last Cavalier is the story of Hector, the Count of Saint Hermione. For three years Hector has been languishing in prison but when Napoleon becomes Emperor of France he is freed on the condition that he serves in the Emperor's army. A thrilling and adventurous story full of daring escapades follow on from there. As part of non-fiction November I'm going to read How Far From Austerlitz, Napoleon 1805 to 1815 by Alistair Horn. Napoleon's brilliance, energy and invincible spirit, his swashbuckling gifts as a commander and his thoroughness as an administrator are revealed in this biography by a noted military historian. I'm also in the process of reading The Lion of Justice by Jean Plady in preparation for the second episode of my Norman and Plantagenet series which will be published on Wednesday the 20th of November. I'm finally going to read Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel, the story of the rise and fall of Thomas Cromwell. And my second pick for non-fiction November is Casanova's Women by Judith Summers, which was very kindly sent to me by Jason of Byways in Bookland. Check out, check out his excellent channel if you have not already done so. There is a link to his channel in the show notes below. And now here is a quick recap of all the books and I'll be back on Tuesday with my favourite musicals tag in which I sing songs from the musicals of Rogers and Hammerstein. Mm -hmm.